Hello, New York. My name is Jonathan Duong, and this is my five-minute hospitalist guide to acute management of hypokalemia. My main objective is to outline a mental framework for repleting potassium. So let's get started on that framework. First, what is my potassium goal? Generally, your goal is to replete to a level of four. But you should also ask yourself, are there active issues contributing to low potassium, such as ongoing diuresis, ongoing GI losses from vomiting or diarrhea, or does the patient have poor nutrition, which causes low total body potassium? Or does the patient have underlying cardiac issues, regardless of active issues, such as I mentioned before? Things such as CHF or CAD may predispose patients to cardiac arrhythmias, which is the main reason why we are repeating potassium in the first place. Next, if you only learn one thing from this entire talk, you should learn that using 10 MEQ of potassium chloride will generally increase your serum potassium by 0.1. 10 MEQ for every 0.1 increase with normal kidney function. I say normal kidney function because remember, the kidneys manage potassium. So if you have a patient with CKD or moderate to severe AKI, you will want to half that amount just to be conservative. Next, what route and formulation are best? If the patient's enteric system is intact, pill form by mouth is the best option. The liquid form is highly unpleasant to taste, but is good for NG or percutaneous gastric tubes. Just avoid giving more than 60 MEQ at once into the stomach, as it can cause abdominal upset. If the enteric system doesn't work, or if you need to give more at the same time as PO, the IV route is your next option. Unfortunately, it's a slow method. You can only give 10 MEQ per hour through peripheral lines. So you may be taking precious PIV space for several hours if you need to give a lot. If you have a central line, that would be your preference as you can double the rate. When should I recheck the value? Remember that this is largely trial and error and your goal is to shoot to somewhere around four. If there are active issues that you expect to continue hypokalemia, such as the, men, such as the, um, such as the topics I mentioned earlier, you may want to check twice a day. And if you have severely low potassium levels, say something less than three, you can opt to just try to get closer to four in your first run. You definitely wouldn't want to give more than 100 MEQ at once for risk of causing acute hyperkalemia. Finally, magnesium is required for potassium homeostasis. So a low magnesium will need to be repleted before you can effectively repeat potassium. You can use magnesium oxide orally or if you're concerned about causing diarrhea with the oral supplement, you can use magnesium sulfate IV. So let's try some examples. Your patient is a 50-year-old man with a history of CHF who presents with COVID-19, but is also undergoing a CHF exacerbation. He's being diuresed with IV Lasix VID. On morning labs, you might see a potassium of 3.6 with normal kidney function. If his enteric system works, you can easily write for 40 MEQ of KCLPO times one to reach your goal of four. Alternatively, if he's intolerant to larger amounts, you can either give him the IV version or you could try splitting it up into two smaller doses over time. What if the potassium level is lower at 2.8? For more severely low levels, you, will, you, may want to provide, you may want to prioritize the IV form over the oral form to replete more quickly. But honestly, you hope to give both simultaneously. Remember, you should avoid giving more than 100 MEQ at once to avoid acute hyperkalemia-induced arrhythmias. You can easily recheck the potassium level later in the day and continue from there. Sometimes because IV KCL is caustic to smaller peripheral veins, some patients cannot tolerate this for four hours through PIV. And you're going to want to use a central line if it's available or you may have to use the enteric round, but that's okay. And finally, what if the potassium is 3.4 and the creatinine is elevated? Because the patient has some level of renal insufficiency, whether it be new AKI or his baseline CKD, you can half your normal amount of 60 MEQ and give him 30 MEQ orally or through IV. To summarize, hopefully I've given you a simple mental framework to repeating potassium. And if you only learn one thing, generally speaking, 10 MEQ of potassium will raise the serum potassium by 0.1, and you should reduce for 
renal insufficiency. Hopefully that was helpful. My best wishes go out to you, Niora. So stay safe. <laughs>